every single Android app uses recycler views or they display some kind of a list of data and when you're displaying a list of data or when you're using a recycler view no matter what you need to get the data so make a network request um, get it from the cache whatever once you retrieve that data you then set the data to the recycler view and it's displayed in the list so typically how this is done is like i said you retrieve some data and then if you're using mvvm or mvi in your observer you then get that data and you set it to the list usually it's pretty straightforward just like list of data usually an array list and then you set it to the list that's inside of your adapter so the thing that i want to show you in this video is a way to optimize that process there's actually a class named diff util which was built by google that has a built-in algorithm that optimizes the process of taking new data in or getting some data and then setting that data to your recycler view and it's it's so so easy to do that i really think that you should just use it in every single one of your projects. If you have a recycler view, no matter what, you should be doing this. It's very simple to do. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in this video. Basically, we just need to create a, a little class inside the recycler view adapter, and then write a tiny bit of logic, a couple lines of code, and set that new data to the list. So before we get started, before we actually look at the code, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna show you the, the class that I'm talking about that optimizes your recycler view performance. So it's called diff util, and I'm just gonna read a bit of, bit of this page because it's got some useful information. I'm gonna kind of paraphrase it, obviously. I'm not gonna make you sit here and listen to me read this whole thing. Um, so here we go. So diff util is a utility class that calculates the difference between two lists and outputs a list of updated op outputs a list of update operations that converts the first list into the second one. So what it does, as it says, is it takes in the new list, it compares the two lists, so the new one and the old one, and then it makes it optimizes the process of updating that data. So what it does without reading the rest of this is it uses an algorithm known as the Eugene W. Myers algorithm, which I don't know how that works, just right, right away coming out and saying it, I have no idea. But basically, as you can see from the uh, from the post here, it says it's an algorithm that calculates the, calculates the minimal number of updates to convert one list into another. And as I was, uh, as I started to say before I started talking about the algorithm, is the way it works is it takes the, the new list, takes the old list, and then it compares every list item in that entry based on a certain parameter. And um, if if that list item already exists, it just replaces it. So it update, or sorry, it doesn't replace it. It just updates that list item. If that list item doesn't exist in the old list, it then adds it to the list. So it's it's not setting a completely new list. It's only updating it and adding new ones where it absolutely has to. So basically at the end of the day, just an optimized way to set the data. And if you scroll down here, it's got some kind of test cases down here. It says, you know, if you have a hundred items with 10 modifications, so in other words, 10 updates. So you have a list that's got 10 items and you want to update 10 of those items. On average, it takes 0.39 milliseconds, which is absolutely nothing. And if you go all the way down to the end here where you have a hundred, a thousand items with 200 modifications, it's only 13.54 milliseconds, which is absolutely tiny. And chances are you won't have many lists that are longer than that. So very performant. It's a very performant operation. So, uh, so that's kind of, I just wanted to talk about the introduction to this and I'm going to be taking you through an example now. So we're going to look at a recycler view that I've built ahead of time, obviously, and we're just going to implement this diff util functionality, which you'll find is very, very simple. It shouldn't take longer than five minutes and you'll have a much more performant recycler view than you did before. And you should probably use this in all of your projects. If you take a look at the Google samples, which I spent a lot of time in the Google samples, I noticed that they use it in pretty much all of their projects. So it's highly recommended. Also, as a heads up, if you want to see a more uh, practical example or a more uh, complete example and also with some added architecture, so some added features, head on over to my website, codingwithmitch.com, go over to the coming soon section over here or go to courses and select the model view intent architecture course. This course is an introduction to model view intent architecture, which is my new favorite architecture. You can check out my channel. I have videos on it. And in this, I show you a more complete example of how to use diff util, how to set recycler views and also how to use MVI architecture. So if you're a newbie to architecture, you don't know what the hell architecture is, I highly suggest checking that out. Now let's look at the code for this video. 
So before we get started, before we actually write any lines of code, I just want to show you kind of what we're, what we're going to be dealing with here, what kind of recycler view we're going to be setting up. So on the screen here, I have the demo app. I'm going to click on get blogs. One second goes by and then it retrieves a list of blog posts. So this is the recycler view that we're going to be setting up. Pretty basic, just got an image and some text and you can scroll it. Uh, down to the end, there's not that many. So it's retrieving actual information from the network. I'm not gonna be showing you how to do any of the major stuff. This is actually the app that we build in the MVI course. So um, this is just gonna be strictly for setting up the recycler view, um, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you everything you need so that you can apply the diff util in, in your other projects where you have recycler views. All right, so as I said, this is gonna be very, very simple. Uh, before we start, I want to take a look at the build.gradle file just so you can see the dependencies that I have. But you don't you don't need anything. All you need is the recycler view dependency. Sorry, you do need something. You need the recycler view dependency. And obviously, I have other things in here because this is a complete project, but just strictly for the diff util stuff, all you need is the Android X recycler view or any of the support recycler views. They also support um, the diff util. So that's the build.gradle just pay attention to the recycle view dependency. That's all you need. Uh, now let's go into, uh, let's go into main recycler adapter and let's go into main fragment. And I'm gonna show you two things. The first thing is I'm gonna show you how the data is currently being set. And then we are gonna get started using diff util to optimize that process. So main fragment is the fragment that I showed you uh, in the demo just at the beginning of this video. Basically all that's happening here is the data is coming in and then it's being set to the recycler view adapter through this submit list method. And here's the list of blog posts. So you don't really need to know anything else about how this is working. Just know that it's submitting a new list of data to the recycler view adapter. Now let's go into the recycler view adapter and just take a look and see how that's working. So here's the submit list method. You can see that it's taking in a list of blog posts and it's just setting that new list when it comes in. And there's the list up at the top there, an array list of blog posts. So pretty pretty classic way to set data to a recycler view. We're just using a view holder to set the set the view items. Uh, and you know, I'm not gonna talk about how to set up a recycler view. I expect all of you to already know how to do that. So now how can we optimize this using diff util and take advantage of the algorithm that's built into it? So the first thing we need to do is build a new class inside of our adapter. This is gonna be called blog item diff callback. So variable old blog list equals list of blog posts because that's the objects that I'm setting. Uh, and then we need var new blog list. That's also gonna be a list of blog posts. And that's it, that's it for the constructor. So now we want to extend this by diff util dot callback. And inside here, we need to insert some override methods. So you can see it's giving me a warning up here. I'm gonna move my mouse up here, click Alt Enter, go to Implement Members, and get all of these members. So highlighting all of those and clicking OK. Now let's write these out one at a time. So I'm gonna delete the two do's inside of here. Delete that, delete that, delete that. The first method that we'll work on is are, are items the same? Um, actually, maybe before I start writing this, I'll explain kind of how this works. So Get old list size is obviously just the list size, so old blog list dot size. The new list size is obviously just the new size, so return new blog list dot size, pretty straightforward. The two methods that are kind of confusing or could be confusing is our items the same and our contents the same. So these do two different things. And rather than trying to explain this myself, I think they actually do a pretty good job in the documentation. So let's take a look here. So um, how I got to where I'm at is I'm at the same page I showed you at the beginning of this video the diff util class. If you scroll down and you go to this callback here, so I click that, uh, this is where I'm at right here because that's what we're using. We're using the uh, diff util callback class. So let's take a look here and see, see what it says. So our contents the same is called by diff util when it wants to check whether two items have the same data. So that means in our case with a blog post, the image, the title, the primary key, the body, everything. Are, is that information the same when you compare two blog posts? The second one is are items the same? So this is called by diff util to decide whether two objects represent the same item. So in that case, we, we don't necessarily care about all the data. Maybe we just care about the primary key because the primary key is the unique identifier for that object. So are items the same? We can just compare the primary keys because if you take a look at the documentation, which I just had open, are items the same called by diff util to decide whether two objects represent the same item. So all we wanna do in this case is 
is compare the primary key. And actually, I don't think I showed you the blog post object yet, so I should probably show you that. Uh, so there's just a title, a body, an image, and a primary key. Obviously, if you guys know anything about how data is stored in databases, which I expect you guys should, uh, you know, the, the primary key is generally the unique identifier. So these things never change. It's set once and it's unique to every single different object. So a title, a body, and an image can obviously change, whereas the primary key never changes. So that's the thing that we're going to check in our items the same because it's a unique property that should never change. So I'm going to do return old blog list dot get the old item position and I want to get that primary key. So if this equals the other one's primary key, so I'm actually just going to copy this, copy that and do a new blog list, get the new position. If that if those primary keys are equal, then we know that yes, those blog items are the same object. So now let's come down to our contents the same. This one is going to be a little trickier. So we could write some logic like we did in the our items the same, but there's an easier way to do this. Because really what we want to do is we want to compare all the fields. We want to compare the title, the body, the image, and the primary key. So we're going to go into our blog post model, which you could do for any of your projects. Just go into the model class that you're displaying in your recycler view. Press control O, go to equals, and now we're going to write an equals method that determines what it means to have their contents the same. So I'm returning true at the bottom, and now I'm going to write a bunch of logic in here that uh, will return false if if anything is different basically. So if any of the parameters are different, then it will return false. So first things first, you generally always want to check to see if the Java class, so the actual class of the object is the same as the one that it's being compared to. Obviously, if you compare a blog post object to a string object, they're not the same object. In that case, you want to return false right away because you know um, they can't possibly be equal because they're not even the same object. Uh, if we pass that bit of logic, we can cast the other to a blog post object. So we know that, yes, this is a blog post object. Now we can check all of the individual fields. So if the primary key, so I can do primary key does not equal other dot primary key, then return false, obviously. That means they're not the same. Uh, now I'm going to copy this for the rest of the parameters. So PK, so we want to do it for title, body, and image. So title, if the title does not equal the title return false if the body does not equal the body return false if the image does not equal the image then return false so that that's what we can use to determine if the contents of two blog posts are the same when they're being compared so let's go into main recycler adapter and we can compare those two so just want to return the old blog list dot get the old item position if that is equal to the new blog list dot get new item position and that's it so that's going to be the blog item diff callback now this this is obviously just the things that we need to fill out but in the background when you make use of this it uses that algorithm to figure out whether it needs to just update a list item or add a new list item it basically just optimizes that process so the last step is going to be going into our submit list method which is responsible for sending the data to the adapter and writing some new code in here to make use of our blog item div callback. All right, so this is going to be the same for any of your projects. So you can pretty much just copy the structure, as I said. So you want to do the old list is equal to the current list, which in my case is items. Uh, then we want to create an object called the diff result. So diff result is going to be of type diff util dot diff result and set that equal to diff util dot calculate diff. And inside here, we want to create that new blog item diff callback object. So blog item diff callback, which is the object that we just, or that class that we just created. Uh, and inside here, I want to pass the old list and I want to pass the new list or sorry. Yeah, the new list. So blog list, which is being passed as input up here. After that's done, we set the current list to the new list and we make use of that callback. So I want to do diff result dot dispatch updates, dispatch updates to this recycler view. And that's it. That's all you need to do to set up diff util and how to, to optimize your recycler views. But, uh, but anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully it helps. Um, I'm not even going to run it because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just creating the diff util callback, submitting new list items. 
Um, again, if you want to see a more complete example, check out my new MVI course on my website. You can get to it by going to codingwithmitch.com, going to model view intent over here, or clicking on courses and finding it in there. It's going to show you, you know, an introduction to MVI architecture. There's a nice description here. You can see what the target audience is, what you're going to learn. Source code is available on GitHub. You can watch the demo application, which is free or the course demo by clicking on that right there. And you'll learn about uh, a lot of things, Kotlin, MVI architecture, which is very similar to MVVM. And um, yeah, so that's, that's going to be it. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you'll be able to optimize some of your recycler views moving forward with this extremely easy to use algorithm and system. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.